In this video, you're gonna get a mini course on color grading your edits. Then I'm gonna show you a unique method how to spice up your edits with blur, and it's probably not something you expect. Then in the third method, I'm gonna give away something for free. So I promise you, if you just go through all these steps, you're gonna take your edits on another level. So with that being said, I'm gonna take you straight to After Effects and show you how to turn boring footage into a masterpiece. So we're in After Effects and today we're gonna use the animation we've created before. So for the first thing, what I'm gonna do is create a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna rename it to color. And you know, usually we color grade the regular footage like here, but what if we color graded the edits? This is something the experienced editors have been using to take their edits onto another level. So for this, I'm gonna add the effect called Lumetri Color. And it's really dependent on the scene you got. So for example, here we got a black and white scene, but then when we move over here, we got a blue scene. So for starters, I'm just gonna focus on this one. So something I really like doing is going to basic correction and you would literally try to color grade it like you would do with the regular footage. So for this, I'm just gonna probably bump up the temperature and I really like increasing the temperature by a lot because this is giving you that kind of old vintage style. Then we can play around with the saturation. I'm gonna decrease it a bit go to exposure, maybe we're gonna decrease, bump up the contrast, I'm gonna bump up the highlights, just make the glow pop up even more, decrease the shadows a bit, bump up the whites, and we're gonna head over to curves. We're gonna create a regular S curve, it's also gonna make the brightest parts pop up even more, and we're just gonna slightly decrease the shadows, not too much, actually increase the shadows, but the thing that is a complete game changer is heading over to color wheels and setting individually the shadows, highlights, and midtones to the colors that match your scene. So for example, something that I absolutely love doing is just bringing the shadows more towards the blue color, and you can already notice how good it looks. This is such a game changer. So before, and after absolutely love this then i'm gonna probably just bring down the shadows a bit more and yeah, it's already looking absolutely amazing so this is gonna be especially visible where the darkest parts are so you can notice it perfectly here then as for the highlights which is gonna be for example glow you can notice it here we could set it to whatever you want actually i mean you can go for kind of a green look like in john wick they used a lot of green there but i think i'm just gonna stick with something like subtle blue. And as for the midtones, this is particularly good for color grading the face. Here we can't really see a lot, but we can still do a little bit of work. So say we're gonna drag it also more towards the blue. Holy moly, this is looking so good. And then you can add that warm touch if you bring up the temperature even more. And for some reason, it looks so good. And the thing is that I feel like in edits, you can really go overboard with different settings because if I was color grading the regular footage, I would definitely not do so much work. But let's see how it looks on the other scene. So that's what we have. And if we turn it off, it's a complete game changer just look at that i'll probably just tiny bit bring up the shadows so you can see his face so this is such a game changer so this is before and then after this is literally bringing that animation to life i remember the time when i didn't know about color grading the edits and once i've learned about it actually by accident it completely changed my editing game. So like I'm saying, it's dependent on the animation you got. If you have different colors in the scene, these particular settings might not work there. All right, we're on to the second one. We're just gonna leave our beautiful color grading. And the next thing I'm gonna do is create a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna rename it to blur. Let's add Gaussian blur effect to this. We're gonna bump up the blurriness to say, I don't know, maybe 16. I'm gonna turn it off and then we're gonna create a new solid. Actually gonna change it to black, hit okay. Let's call it turbulent noise. I'm gonna hit enter and we're gonna add the effect. So basically what we want to do here is change this to dynamic twist. I'm gonna go to spline and we need to play around with the contrast and brightness. Also, we're gonna bump up the scale. And here's the thing. What we want to do with this is have the black areas affect the footage with the blur. So everything that is gonna be white is gonna remain like it was, but then black area like over here is gonna affect our animation with the blur. So just to make sure that the blur is kind of nicely fading away, I'll decrease the complexity to zero. Maybe I went overboard. Let's say like two should be fine. So in this example, I feel like that harsh area over here is not gonna be good. So I'm just gonna play around with the contrast, then with the brightness, and this is gonna be much better. So now what I'm gonna do is turn on the visibility on the blur. I'm gonna go to modes, and what we want to do is change the blur, actually the track mat in the blur, to turbulent noise. And as you can see, everything is blurry, but if we change it to Loma mat, it's gonna have, where is it? It's gonna have the blur only in particular areas. So just check it out over here. It's giving such a nice touch to the scene. I know on this sleeve, and then on the shoulder, a little bit of hat. So when the blur is kind of spread all over the place, it's just giving you a nice touch to the scene. We can see the blur over here, and obviously you can bump up the blurriness, to achieve stronger look. But I feel like 15 or 16 was fine. So just so you can understand it a little bit better, look at that area over here. So basically we bring it back on, 
wherever you have the white, it's gonna have the blur. We can also turn it off and go here and invert it. That way the black parts are gonna be blurry. Let's look at that scene over here. It's also having that nice partial blur. Such an amazing way to play around with your footage. So we already made this animation so much better with color grading and also with the blur. And the third thing is using the dotted layer. Hopefully you stick till this moment. If you head over to the description below, and if you go to the link in the very bottom, it's gonna take you to Google Drive. And there you can download the beautiful dotted layer. So I already have it here. I made it myself. It's not really that complicated to create. I'm just gonna hit S and I'm gonna change the scale to 50 since it's for 4K and we're working with Full HD. So let me just quickly do that. And yeah, it, it really sucks at this point, but we're gonna turn it into something amazing. So here I'm just gonna go to modes and I'm gonna pick hard light then we're gonna go to opacity and i'm gonna decrease it to say 14 and this is gonna give you these little dots which are gonna make the whole scene look so much better i would probably decrease it even more maybe to 10 percent so basically the hard light is something i really like using but there's also another mode which is overlay and this is gonna kind of read the colors of the pixels and match it better so you can either go with the hard light or overlay or any other mode to be honest you can just experiment with this these are just two of my favorites. All right, I'm gonna play the whole scene for you without any effects. So that's how it's looking. And then we're gonna bring them back and look at that difference. This is so much better. So here we got the first scene, then let's turn it off. And then if we go here, such a game changer. And just to take it on another level, what you could do is basically change the track mat to our turbulent noise. And if I click here, you're gonna notice that our dotted layer is only affected in certain areas. So here it's opposite to the blur. So here the mat is inverted and here is not. So basically the dotted layer is on the white spots and then the blur is on the black spots. But for example, we could have it set together if we just click the invert mat. Also a pretty cool look, but I think I like it more when it's on the opposite ones. All right, so I gave you a tremendous amount of value today. This is a lot of sauce that I use in my edits to make them look good. And hopefully it will help you out to stand out with your edits. By the way, if you want to supply yourself with some sauce like editing assets you can head over to the description and you will find my store and maybe you'll find something that will match your edits so with that being said i'm gonna wrap it up here and i'll see you tomorrow cheers guys